Welcome to Artisarium. My name is Eleanor. This one right here is Palle. And today we're going to show you how to make a tooled leather elephant mask using Neje. Ska du gå nu? Hej då. Okej, då är vi färdiga då. First and foremost, you want to find a bunch of pictures of the animal or character you want to make. Pay attention to the features. What is it that makes you recognize this as an elephant and not a horse with a trunk and two large ears? And then try to incorporate it into your pattern. Now for construction. I'm bringing out my big roll of paper, but you can just as well use regular A4 sheets. Just tape the edges together to get a bigger area to work with. I'm reconstructing an old pattern I had for a dog mask. I'm tracing it out and then start doing any obvious changes like making the forehead a little higher and constructing a base for the trunk. You can find a link to the finished pattern in the description. When you feel satisfied it's time to cut it out and start playing around with the shape. You need to pay attention so you don't end up like me cutting the wrong lines. Here I forgot that I had extended the forehead 4 centimeters, But no worries, easily fixed. A styrofoam head is always good to have, or something that could substitute as one, making it much easier to sculpt. But remember to put it on your own head from time to time. There is not a single sole that looks like a styrofoam head. Since this elephant already has a pretty graphic expression, I'm thinking of not putting too much effort in creating a natural shaped trunk, but using the benefit of the leather and water shaping it in some way. And I think I'll do the same for the ears. It's time for us to choose our materials! For this type of construction, not using any type of plug to water shape the leather onto, I will go for something thicker, at least 2 to 3 millimeters. But pay attention to the softness of the leather. Even if two hides are the same thickness, it doesn't mean they're equally firm. After choosing my leather, I still wanted it to be even harder, and for that I use leather hardener. But don't use this now, this will be applied right in the end. Since I love tool work, plus I think it will be perfect for this project, I'm gonna go with some delicate ornamental pattern. I found a couple of beautiful patterns on Pinterest I would like to use as an inspiration. I draw the pattern pieces onto a heavier paper that won't tear when tracing my design onto the leather. I'm finishing off with a sharpie so I can see my design through the paper when I'm folding it. That's the best way to get both sides to look equal. Just place it on a light table or simple enough, your window. Uh, just make sure not to live in Scandinavia during winter season. Then I'll do the same for the trunk and ears. I noticed I currently didn't have a big enough piece of leather in the right quality, so I had to do some redesigning and recutting. No biggie, this works just as good. Time to draw your pattern pieces onto the leather. I use a pointy metal tool so you can see your lines just enough without making a permanent mark. Then I cut them out roughly. I'll make the final cuts after I'm done with the tooling and dyeing. When it's time to trace your design, you want to wet down your leather first. Use a sponge with preferably distilled water or else it could leave marks from any minerals like lime. 
That's a lemon. Yep, that's lime. As I said earlier, I'm using heavier paper when I trace, or else it will tear right away because of the moist leather. Continue until every single one is done. Start by once again wetting your leather with a damp sponge until it looks saturated. Allow the surface to dry up a little bit before you start. This is my selection of stamps I use for tool work. You really don't need more than perhaps 3 to 5 of them to be able to get the result you wish. And honestly, anything harder than the leather itself can be used as a tool, as long as it doesn't break. One thing you really should have though is a swivel knife. You use it to cut out your outer lines before you start with your stamps to get a good three-dimensional effect. Here's how you use it. Simple! Now we finally arrive at the fun part! The leather will keep its moisture for some time, so don't overdo the wetting. I can usually sit a couple of hours before it's time to use the sponge again. You'll know when it's time. But otherwise, just play around and have fun. It's not as complicated as it looks. Just make sure to use a poly or rawhide mallet when you hit your stamps. Time for shaping the ears and trunk. Use your sponge again and wet down both sides. If you want a sharp edge, use a small hammer to hammer it down, but have some scrap material between so you don't get any markings from the hammer head. Check in with your pattern pieces where you want your shaping. Fold and stretch and don't be afraid to put some force to it. You can always redo it. There, two ears done! One good thing is to use other objects for support during drying. Just make sure the objects aren't made of a material that reacts with water and thereby miscoloring the leather, such as iron which will leave rust stains for example. Which I uh, accidentally did without thinking. Ooh, coloring! I'll start by testing a bunch of different types of dyes to see what kind of expression I like the best. Always make tests before applying to your actual piece. Never cut corners, I promise you, you're gonna thank yourself in the end. As you can see, the alcohol-based dyes are very flowy and soaks into the leather very easily. When you dye big areas, you want to really saturate the leather so it does not become patchy. The oil dyes are more viscous, which I personally like better to work with. They don't penetrate the leather as hard as the alcohol-based ones, they're also more true to color after they've dried. The dyes that are called stain is one of my favorites when it comes to dyeing tool work. In comparison to the previous ones, they are very light and you can instead build up the color. When dyeing tool work, it gets darker where you punched your pattern, making it stand out in an extraordinary beautiful way. And of course, you should save your color tests. Remember to mark them thoroughly. I picked EcoFlow's Gel Antique in dark brown for the background, or the skin of the elephant if you like. But I can't hold myself, so I'll start to paint the tooled area first. Now for the skin. Since the gel antique is water-based, I'm diluting it slightly to get more like a watercolor effect. Usually, you apply this dye with a rag in circular motions and then wipe off the excess. But for this creation, it was easier to use a brush. So, as usual, just experiment. Only no way is the wrong way. 
The gold color I use is a textile paint called Acra K from Zenit. Uh, link in the description. Before I painted the ornaments on the ears, I wanted to cut them out to their actual shape and apply the leather hardening. Use a brush and apply in thin layers evenly to the backside. Allow it to dry between your layers and continue until you are satisfied. When you're finished, clean your brush in alcohol. Nice and firm. Perfect! Now continue the artwork. We're done painting everything and now we need to seal it with a finish. I have these two at the moment, Ecoflow's Satin Sheen and Phoebing's Tan Coat. I will go with Phoebing's today since it's a bit more glossy. Same here, apply an even layer over the whole thing. Don't mind all the bubbles that occur, they will disappear when drying. I'm applying two coats to make sure I get the finish properly into the toolwork. Remember to dry in between the layers. After the coating has dried, I cut clean the rest of my pieces. Next, I want to bevel the edges. For this thin leather, I'm using an edge beveler size 1. Ah, so satisfying. Next up, burnishing your edges. This time using Ecoflow's gum tragacanth and a wood slicker. Apply a thin layer to the edges with a brush or cotton swab. Take your wood slicker, you can also use a bone folder or piece of canvas, and rub it briskly to the edge. The heat that occurs due to the friction makes the product darken and shine. Ah, more satisfaction. Time to assemble. Using a wing divider, I map out the seam line and stitching. Then pierce the stitch holes with an awl. Place the pieces that are going to be stitched together on top of each other and copy the stitching holes over to the other part. It will both save you a lot of time and give a better result. When stitching, I use a seam called saddle stitch. Wax your thread, preferably polyester since it's more durable, and place a needle in each end of it. Lock them by making a few back stitches in the thread itself and seal with more wax. Stitch up and down from both sides. If you want to learn more about saddle stitching, there's a great tutorial by JH Leather that you can watch here. I try to stitch the shape for every piece as far as I can before mounting them together. And a bit of leather hardener for the face of the elephant now when I've set the shape. Last thing to attach, the ears. I'm starting with making the seam line and punching the holes a couple of millimeters behind the crease I made when I water shaped them. Then I decide where I want the ears to sit on the head and copy the holes. But since it's a bit tricky to hold everything in place and use the awl at the same time, I finish about 10 centimeters at a time. To fasten the thread when I'm finished, I make a couple of backstitch ending with having both needles on the backside. Then I simply make a double knot and pull both threads under a made stitch. If you want, you can seal the knot with a bit of wax. The very last thing to make is the tusks. The pattern piece I made is just a quarter of a circle that I fold into a cone. I chose to use vellum since it's very easy to shape. You wet it down, fasten it to a plug with needles, straps or whatever you have and then let it dry. You can speed up the drying time with a heat gun or hair dryer. Be careful if you use a heat gun though, the vellum can very easily burn and get damaged. Wow. 
one. And two. Yeah, totally worth it. All in all, a successful project. Only thing I can say is it takes time and be patient. Please leave a comment below and tell us what you thought. That way we know what you like and what you want to see more of. And if you liked it, remember the thumbs up and please subscribe so we can see you in the next one. Waiting for the cat to lie down. Na hallo!